Hi, it's Corrine. Thanks so much for stopping by. Today I have this beautiful journal to share with you, and I do have the full process video on how this came together, but for those of you who don't like to watch the process of it, I thought I would just do a quick overview of it and show you how it came together. What I'm using is this journal that I got from Hobby Lobby. It's a pretty thick journal, and it's got one and a quarter inch binding rings lots of papers in here and they're perforated so you can tear them out lots of journaling papers and I knew when I saw this that I could um, make two books out of this and uh, you know decorate them so to make them pretty so this is 9 by 11 I'm using an absolutely gorgeous gorgeous new collection from Knitwit Collections called Abigail it's a digital collection and I do have a video showing more about digital papers and how I use them for mini albums scrapbook pages and more you can do anything with digital and you can print them as many times as you want once you purchase them so Knitwit Collections they sell them separate so if you only want to buy one of the paper packs you can do it that way if you only want to buy the elements or all the embellishments you can do it that way however if you buy the bundle you'll save money than buying them separate so the bundle is what I recommend because you get absolutely everything that comes in the collection so on the front here Mary Fran is the designer and she has such talent she is so talented and has such an eye for design in one of her papers it comes like this let me put up a picture for you and show you but it comes like this with um, this in the middle and lace here here's a photo of what I'm referring to so I used that inspiration and I made my own I, I added my own lace here I added a border here and if you stay tuned for the process video, you'll be able to see all of that. This here is my favorite paper from the collection and it comes in several colors. So I can't get enough of that. And with digital, if you wanted to, you could size it up, size it down, however you want. For this, this is 11 by nine. And I did use the spiral wires for the binding. I added a chipboard piece here as well. So this whole portion is dimension, dimensional. Same with this here. This came in the collection. I added about five pieces behind it to give it dimension. I added all these gorgeous products from Wild Orchid Crafts. I added some large open roses, some magnolias. I used some lotus flowers, the pink center. These are my favorite. I added um, some of the throughout the flowers that come in the collection and I did double them on cardstock hopefully you can see they're absolutely stunning they match the paper collection perfectly of course and I cut two pieces glued them together to make them strong since they're going to be on the front of the album and I tucked those throughout I love the look of that with the paper uh, flowers that match the collection to go along with the mulberry flowers from Wild Orchid Crafts I also tied in some of the blue by adding some of these sweetheart blossoms I have some cheesecloth here and then I have this really pretty um, glitter bow with a pearl to the center. I have some of the flat back glitter balls from Wild Orchid Crafts and Crystal Nouveau drops in white. I also added some of the silver corners and this also comes in the collection. I did double that as well. I like to double all the uh, embellishments with cardstock and then of course to this uh, pinked edge lace and then this ruffled lace. Again, I use Mary Fran's idea because she has a paper like I showed you in there with the lace on the edge. I also, this is another thing I like about digital. It's very light here because I went with light. I wanted it to be very um, soft, but I added a scalloped edge that peeks out under this piece here. And then some flat back pearls. And then look at the back. Absolutely stunning. This again is from the collection. I did back it on that white so it stood out. This paper is absolutely beautiful. Here is the album. Lots of journaling pages. On the front here I did make a large pocket. Here is from the paper collection 
and they have this gorgeous border of flowers. So I just added that to the top of the paper before printing it out. You can have your die cutting machine, if you have an electronic die cutting machine, a Cricut or a Cameo, have it cut it out for you, like all these little uh, fussy cut pieces, or you can cut them by hand, whatever you'd like to do. Sometimes I cut them by hand uh, in front of the TV because it's just relaxing to do. So I added a large pocket, and to the pocket I added some journaling cards that come in the collection. Beautiful, beautiful imagery. Look at this postcard. I love a good postcard. And look at this, it's it's made to be torn music paper. And I printed this out on a, it has like a, a glitter to it, the paper. It probably will not pick up on camera very well, but it's just beautiful. And then here I have another piece from the collection. I, I backed it on three pieces of chip uh, cardstock excuse me, and then a piece of chipboard underneath. So this is dimensional as well, three of the flowers. And then throughout, I just added a few pieces here and there. This comes in the collection. And then these stunning, stunning roses. So pretty. So, oh, and this here, I love their paint chips. They're, they come in every one of their collections. I always will incorporate these in any project I'm doing. They show the little samples of some of the papers in the collection. And then uh, here's that postcard again. This is what I love about digital. I sized it way down for that front pocket and then large for this. So if somebody wants to use this as like kind of a smash book, a, a journal, a drawing book, an idea book, uh, um, their favorite quotes, their Bible quotes, whatever. Uh, this is a little diary for a girl. This is perfect. So just random throughout, I have some of the pieces. Here's this again, I size this much larger. And I know there's more in here, but I won't take too long to search for them. Here's this one again, larger. Also on Knitwit's channel, they have a, and I followed the tutorial myself, they show how you can get your best prints from digital papers. You need to mess with the settings on your printer, basically, um, and use good paper. Here is the back, I absolutely love this. I cut out a large from that same glitter paper, but also the pattern papers in the collection uh, for a large envelope. It's Velcro enclosed, so they can add photos, little receipts, whatever. I added a glitter bow with a pearl to the center and this stunning, stunning paper. This paper comes vertical and I just turned it to go diagonal. Again, another reason I like digital, you can Make it your own. Uh, Mary Fran also does little clusters already in there for you. So if you don't want to design anything yourself, she does a lot of it for you so you don't have to. So if you like to watch the start to finish on it, please stay tuned. And thank you so much for watching. Check out the description box and stop by Knitwit Collections. They have so many different everything. If you're a dog lover, uh, just everything. I can't even put it into words how many gorgeous collections that they have. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the process video. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, I got this journal I had said from Hobby Lobby, but I meant to say Tuesday morning. I knew that I could repurpose it and use the paper in it. And it was a thick journal, so I knew I could make two journals out of it. So I'm just taking it apart. I will save those wire bindings for another project. I am separating the paper in half to make one journal today and then another one in the future. And I'm using these gorgeous papers from Knitway Collections. Look how beautiful the detail, the shadowing. Absolutely love Mary Fran's designs. This is probably one of my more favorite collections and that's so hard to choose because I have so many favorites. So as I showed earlier, I added a scallop border to the edge and I did it with a light cream color. And where you see those white blocks on the paper, I knew I would be covering those up so there was no sense in printing them and using ink where I didn't need it. Here I'm just showing you I cut out a lot of journaling cards and flowers and also backing pieces for the flowers to make them stronger. So I'm going to use some Fabri-Tac and glue on my papers. I made sure to, to cut them out the size that would cover that pink that was already on there. And you can see I have two bottles of Fabri-Tac. I have one with the normal nozzle so I can get a, a very thin 
line of it and the other one I cut the nozzle slightly so I can get a lot more out at one time. I like to use the thinner one to go around the edges to make sure I have full coverage on my papers. So I'm simply going to adhere those down, use my brayer, make sure that it's adhered down very well. And what I like about Fabri-Tac is if you get any on the paper or any anywhere else, you can just rub it off. It just comes right off. So that one with the big white block at the bottom is gonna be where I have the pocket. And this one I'm gonna have an envelope cutting, or excuse me, um, to the middle of that. That's why I have that white block. I didn't wanna waste any ink on it. So my original plan was to use my cinch and, you know, re-cut uh, the holes for it, for the binding, but this chipboard ended up being so thick it didn't even fit in my cinch binding machine. Here I'm cutting, I'm mitering the corners and pressing down those tabs. This is going to be for my pocket. I'm going to add my glue right to those tabs. Um, first here I'm apparently adding my decorative paper on. Again, I added a scallop border to the top of that. And I did mention that I will link a video that I have more information on how to use digital papers. Super simple to do. You can use a die cutting machine or you don't have to. You can just print them out and cut them out with scissors, cut them out by hand, however you want to do it. So here are some beautiful laces from Wild Orchid Crafts and using Mary Fran's design idea on one of her papers I'm going to add my own lace but I did want that middle piece to be dimensional so I'm adding a piece of chipboard I end up adding a second piece of chipboard as well I really wanted it to stand up as my focal piece on the front of my journal so here's where I realized it would not fit in my cinch and I didn't want to waste the chipboard that was part of why I bought it is that I could repurpose the chipboard, reuse it. So I'm just using my crocodile. I made a little template on that white piece of paper using my cinch and then I'm just using that template to guide me to where to put the holes so I could bind it all together so that way it matched up with the paper that came in the, the journal. So I'm doing the same thing for that middle piece. I'm just marking it with my pencil and I will use my crocodile to punch it out. My crocodile went through it no problem. But it was so thick it didn't, like I said, fit in my cinch. So the next album I make with the next set of papers, I'll just use my own chipboard and I'll be able to use my cinch for that. Here's that beautiful lace. I'm cutting it in half because you'll only see part of it. That way I get two pieces out of it. And I added some Fabri-Tac to add my glue, but I realized it was going to take way too long to dry. So I went ahead and switched up to my hot glue. I love using hot glue as well. You just want to be careful not to burn yourself. Mine never, I don't know, it works really well, but it doesn't get that hot. I never have to worry about burning myself. But again, you want to be really careful when using a hot glue gun. In the past with another gun, I've burnt myself several times. This one is the Aileen's multi um, ultimate glue gun, I believe is what it's called. I got it from Michael's using a coupon years ago. So I'm deciding if I wanted that lace to go at the top of my dimensional piece or the bottom. I decided on the bottom here. So just kind of eyeballing it. I'm again using my hot glue, adding that down. Setting back my piece so I can eyeball it to see exactly where I want it to fall. And I love that this lace has just a little bit of pink, which ties in with this gorgeous paper collection. Now that ruffle is what it was sitting up a little bit. That's why I decided to go ahead and add a second piece of chipboard. And like I said, I really wanted it to stand out anyways. So again, matching up the holes, I'm just quickly using my crocodile for those. And then I will use my Fabri-Tac and hot glue to adhere it down quickly. Here's where I'm adding those edge pieces. I made those one half inch by 11. I made them a little bit longer so I could cut them off to make sure that they fit perfectly. So I'm just adding that to the top and bottom, leaving a little bit of that scallop edge to peek out. I love working with digital collections. It's really, it, there's so much you can do with it. And I love that you can design it yourself or 
knitwear collections, they include lots of pre-designed stuff. So you don't have to, if you don't want to do any of that, you don't have to. So here I'm just putting holes where my lace was to make sure that my binding rings will go through them. Again, using a little bit of hot glue so it adheres immediately, but also the fabric tack. And I made this envelope, so I'm adding a little piece of Velcro underneath it. I'm gonna add a beautiful silver glitter bow with a pearl to the center. And I'm using some glossy accents to add my pearl. It comes with a little sticky adhesive. I just pull that off and I'd rather use the glossy accents to make sure it doesn't move. And it does take a little while to dry, so I'll just set that aside to dry while I work on the rest of it. So these extra little journaling pieces and postcards, I'm just kind of flipping throughout, adding them to make sure that when I um, put my wire binding, they are included in it. I could have used my cinch for this part, but I wanted to use this spiral binding that I have, and it's super simple to use as well. So I'm making sure all the holes line up before I put it all together, and then I'm using some clips to hold it together while I put that on there. I show you a little bit on camera, but it was I did most of it off camera because it was easier to just kind of put it in my lap and do it so I could get a good view of it. But you simply just wind it through. I got those from Hobby Lobby. They're the cinch binding wires. And then I'm just gonna cut off the excess. I just use the full piece and then cut it afterwards. So I'm just looking to make sure it's all, all the pieces are in there correctly. Adding some pieces into my front pocket. And then I have a few extra embellishment pieces that I'm gonna add throughout the book and I'll add more at the end as well. This came together rather quickly and I love giving these as gifts. This one I'm going to be selling, but these make great gifts to give. Little journals, you can put Bible verses in them, little smash books where you can add pictures or quotes, whatever you'd like. So the back here I'm using some strong double-sided adhesive for my envelope. I'm also going to add some fabric tag and place that right in the middle. And that's why I had that white block, because like I said, I knew you wouldn't see that middle of the paper. Look how gorgeous that paper is. So now I'm going to decorate the front, which is my favorite part to do. I added several layers off camera, but I showed you one there. I added about five layers behind that focal piece and probably about three behind that square piece there. So I'm just gonna adhere all my flowers. I like to do a double layer to make them very sturdy. I won't do that all on camera. I just show you one here. I just simply glue them together. And now I wanted that to stand up even more. So I'm adding a couple pieces of chipboard behind it with my hot glue gun. That's a gorgeous piece that came in the collection already done. And here I'm curling up the edges of my flowers, my paper flowers. These are so beautiful. This paper collection is, I keep saying it, but it is just so gorgeous. I'll be making a mini album with this full collection soon. So again, using my bone folder to curl up some pieces. I like to add those along with some gorgeous mulberry flowers from Wild Orchid Crafts. So I'm just kind of setting everything out, seeing how I like it. I pull out these first set of flowers, but the pink, I did not like how the pink went with it. So quickly I decided to pull out some white flowers instead. And that way it wasn't just overloaded with pink. I wanted it to have that touch of white as well. So I'm pulling out some cheesecloth. I'm gonna tuck that throughout to keep that shabby theme going. And once I decided I to um, add my focal piece right there, I just decided to go ahead and start adding everything down. So I'm just kind of tucking everything. Again, using hot glue, it dries very quickly. I added a large open rose there, and then I'm going to add a couple of the magnolia flowers. And 
now here's some of my absolute favorite flowers from Wild Orchid Crafts. These are the open roses with the baby pink center. So I'm adding a few of those in there. That way they have a touch of pink to them. And this flower, that large flower there on the left, I do it here down, but you'll see me rip that up in a minute. I didn't like the balance of it, I guess you could say. It was just too large. So I'm adding this beautiful blue glitter bow. I wanted to tie in that blue. And I will go back and add a pearl to the center of that. Deciding where I wanted that label, and I was happy with it up at the top left. Again, that has been doubled with cardstock as well. So I'm using my Fabri-Tac and a little hot glue. I will add pearls to that, but you'll see me pull those off later as well because I add pearl trim to it. I'm using a jewel picker just to pick that little tiny pearl up and add it to the center of my bow. And I have these beautiful sweetheart blossoms. Again, all of this is from Wild Orchid Crafts. I wanted to tie that blue in, so I'm just gonna tuck a few here and there. Curling the ends of the little stems. And then I'm pulling out some pink hip rosebuds. I used the lighter pink again. I didn't want that pink to stand out too much. I just wanted to lightly tie it in. So I just add a few of those. And I'm using E6000 to adhere those pearls. E6000 does take a while to dry. Once it dries, it is on there for good. So luckily I changed my mind before it dried and I was able to pull those right off. Here's where I decided that I didn't like that flower, so I just pulled that off and added two of the smaller flowers instead. And a lotus flower right here as well. I keep lifting it up just to see if I'm happy with it or what else I think that it needs. And here's where I decided I held up the trim to it and I love the look of that. So I was just deciding do I want the trim at the bottom, in the middle, or um, at the top of that border piece. I'm using, again, Fabri-Tac. Fabri-Tac is like, they call it hot glue in a bottle because it's strong like hot glue is. However, it's easy to work with because you won't get burned from it. I like it because it does dry rather quickly, but it does also give you time to move things around. And if it gets on anything you don't want, it just rubs right off. And it is really strong. So here's where I took off those pearls, just wiped away that E6000 and added my pearl trim here. I'm taking my my um, heat tool to get rid of any hot glue strings that are hanging around. And here I go through and add the flowers. This one I'm curling up, I'm adding some hot glue to the middle of it and then some pop dots behind the leaves. And then this piece, this square piece, I wanted it to stand up a little bit more so I'm adding a chipboard piece to the back of that and adding it to my pocket tucking in some more of those beautiful roses or flowers. And then I really quickly go through this, add them throughout the book, just random pages. I like cutting a bunch out at one time and then I can just go back and add them where I need them at the end. No rhyme or reason, I'm just flipping pages and adding them throughout. This is really good quality paper. I was really glad that I found these books. If you go to Knitwit Collections on their YouTube channel, if you subscribe to their YouTube channel, when they come out with new collections, they go through the entire collection and show you what comes in each different collection or the entire collection. Um, you can purchase different parts of it. Like if you only want to buy, uh, you know, the 
one paper pack, you could do that. Or you can buy just the embellishments. However, if you buy the bundled package I mentioned earlier in the video, it does save you money. And then you get everything that comes in the collection, which are oh, so much to choose from. So many different pattern papers and their solid papers are actually not even solid. They have a slight pattern to them, which makes it really nice. So I finished it off with some silver corners and some crystal nouveau drops. Thank you so much for staying with me and watching the process. Check out Knitwit Collections. I'll have a link down in the description box. Have a great day.